All right, does this sound familiar? Your first impression of somebody is that they're so charming and they're so confident, but then over time you're discovering that they're controlling and they're self-centered. If so, you may be dealing with a narcissist. Okay, we are going to get some help from clinical psychologist Ramani Duvasala in a moment. But first, why the term narcissism is having a moment. Y'all want to know what triggers a narcissist more than anything else in the world? Reality. Narcissist, it's a word that's become mainstream, describing a person who is overly self-involved and often vain and selfish. But it's also a word that's overused and misunderstood. Clinical psychologist Ramani Duvasala's TED Talk on the topic has been viewed more than one million times. Narcissism is in fact a personality pattern. It's a sort of way of relating to the world. At the core, she says narcissists are deeply insecure, like to be in control, and are grandiose. And like it or not, we can find narcissists everywhere, from an overbearing parent to a destructive ex. I was so completely manipulated into believing that I was everything for this narcissist. I believed that I was beautiful, I was smart. She made me feel loved, seen, heard, and the most special person in the world. They put me on a pedestal just to knock me down. Every holiday would be ruined because that holiday wasn't centered around her. Everything in the relationship was blamed on me. He took no accountability. There was a severe lack of empathy. And by the end of the relationship, I really didn't recognize myself anymore. I knew that this person was taking advantage of me. I knew, but I couldn't leave. And I really learned that in the last year, that healing is lifelong. I was able to move on by starting to surround myself with friends and family again. I'm deserving of unconditional love. Just like me, I'm strong enough to get out of it. And just like you, you're strong enough to get out of it too. Very powerful. Dr. Romani joins us now. She's written a few books on narcissism, including her latest. It's called... It's not you. Uh, it's good to see you. Happy that you're here. I mean, there is an instant attraction people have to narcissists. There's a reason that so many people are in these relationships. So when you are going into a, a relationship, what are those signs that may show that, uh-oh, we might have an issue here? Yeah. So once you get past the charm and the charisma and the confidence, the stuff that might pop out, every conversation's about them. They right. will bring it back to them. They'll often interrupt you. They will be very, they have a very low threshold for frustration. Ah. So as soon as things start going wrong, even if it's a little thing like they're not put to the front of the line in the restaurant or they don't get the table they want, you'll start seeing this sort of anger coming out. They may really mistreat people who have less power than them in that situation. Cool. The bartender, the server in the restaurant, mm. the person who parks their car. You'll also see that they will they will become really prickly if you give them any feedback, even like, maybe we should have parked a little closer, snap. And then you'll think, wait a minute, where's charm? Where's the charming, charismatic and you, person? And you start to think it's you. Like, yeah, let me just you think it's you. Yeah. Well, it's like an indoctrination, right? Yeah. They're so charming. They're so lovely. They're so attractive. You're thinking, oh, wow, this person's so into me. Mm -hmm. One of the people said they put me up on a pedestal, yeah. right? So you justify and justify. So when they start behaving badly, that's when it really, really throws people off. They say, this has got to be me. It's right. not you. Right. But that's how these relationships last for a while. But these early signs, they do show up. Wow. You know, I mean, one thing that I wondered as I was reading all of this information is, are people born mm -hmm. with, is, is, and is narcissism a spectrum? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not born. I mean, all babies could be argued to be selfish. Mm -hmm. It's like, feed me, yeah. change me. Yeah, yeah. Like sure. They're supposed to be. That's, yeah. how, that's kind of how they survive. But no, they're not born. Narcissism, like all personality styles, is made. It's a social developmental process. It's how that child interacts with the world. So no, people are not born that way. But yes, it is on a spectrum. At the mildest end, honestly, you're looking at more like your Instagram narcissist. Yeah. Look at me. Aren't I great? Yeah. Tell me I'm wonderful. Annoying, but not harmful. But at the far end of the spectrum, where it's more malignant and controlling and coercive, it can be downright Is dangerous. Is there something that parents are doing yes. to raise a child who turns into that? So let's think of narcissism having two paths yeah. that can lead up to it, right? One path is more 
ad, like adverse, traumatic, chaotic, like that disruptive. Kind of yeah. Okay. And remember, most people who grow up like that don't turn out narcissistic, no, right? But a small percentage yeah. do. The other path, though, is the sort of spoiled child path. Yeah. Right. The child who's never told no, yeah. who's never taught to regulate their emotions. And above all else, that child is told, you are more special than any other child. Uh -huh. Not just you're special. But you're more special Especially than all than these all other these kids. Guys. Wow. Yeah. That's important. Um, okay, the other buzzword that I like to use constantly because my kids like to do it to me is <laughs> gaslighting. <laughs> Your kids are gaslighting uh, you? All kids do, right? <laughs> They're like, I didn't ask for I want one more book, you know, that type of thing. Or I didn't ask you to turn off my lights. I'm like, you just asked me to. <laughs> I mean, it's a joke, sort of. But yeah. Sort of. Um, but gaslighting is different than narcissism. Yeah. Huh? Yes, it is. So gaslighting is a tactic, yeah. right? It's a, it's a manipulation and it's a form of emotional abuse. And I'll tell you why your, your kids are only half gaslighting. Yeah. Let your poor kids off yeah. the hook. Yeah. So it's a, it all narcissist gaslight. Not all gaslighters are narcissistic. Okay. Okay. That okay? Makes sense. And so gaslighting is when a person denies your perceptions, your reality, yeah. your truth. They, they literally say, I never said that. Totally. That never happened. But then the second step of gaslighting is then they cut you down oh I never said that and what do you have a problem like what's wrong with you yeah. your memory doesn't work anymore maybe you need to see it okay my I'll... kids don't do the same no, no, yeah, right. yeah, no. so I then they're not think that you're yeah. in a relationship like one of those young women said and they can't get out maybe yes. they think they can change the narcissist Correct. yes is a narcissist changeable mm, personality styles are really hard to change yeah. listen you both of you have personalities. Yeah. I have a personality, mm -hmm. right? How hard how easy would it be for you to change your personality? Yeah. Not really. And if we have yeah. healthy personalities, they're flexible. There's yeah. a little change yeah. there, right? Narcissism is rigid. It's yeah. maladaptive. Yeah. And they also lack self-awareness. <laughs> they lack, lack the capacity to self-reflect, say, how am I affecting other people? Because there's not a lot of empathy. So right. where are you going to get in that buy-in yeah. to change? So when someone's saying, you need to change, this isn't okay, they will shift blame on that person. No, you know you. what the problem is? The problem's you. Right, you push right? my you button. Push my you push my button. Me do You're that. the problem. You yeah. made me do that. Okay, we've got a lot of people that wow. have questions for you. <laughs> so stick around. A lot more to talk about. Yeah, um, Dr. Romney will answer some of our questions, right, after this. So, in oh, my God. We're back with clinical psychologist Dr. Romney, and she's helping us understand and deal with the narcissists in our lives. Plus, she's going to help answer some viewer questions. There's lots oh, of them. Oh, yeah. You do say um, there are some people who just cannot walk away from their narcissist no, partner, but no. there's a way they can learn to deal with yes. that behavior, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's all about realistic expectations. Okay. We've got a question from our viewer, Katie. With Thanksgiving being this week, many people have conflicting emotions about visiting home with a narcissistic parent or a family member. What recommendations do you have for someone in this situation? Okay, yeah, so. so the conflicting emotions absolutely make sense because people, you know, listen, it's not an all or nothing. A lot of people say, I still really love this person, yeah. but my gosh, this is a toxic interaction. Yeah. If there's, instead of bringing a side dish to Thanksgiving this year, bring heaps of realistic expectations. Yeah, totally. That's, good. That's really what it is. It's that being aware that a year is a long time, mm -hmm. right? We kind of, our memories fade from what that last set mm -hmm. of holidays mm -hmm. were like, and you're like, oh gosh, here we go again. It's going to happen. Take a few deep breaths mm -hmm. before folks walk in the door, before you walk in their, do that, their door and prepare. And then recognize this is going to be how it is. Yeah. I even work with clients and I say, we're going to play some narcissist bingo. Once mm. they hit five times, they've done something toxic, commented on your weight, um, said something rude about what you're eating, compared you to your sibling. Wait till you hit five. Don't say bingo. That's probably a little <laughs> bit dramatic. But then in your, in your mind, say, okay, this, at this point, at five of these, I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to go breathe a little bit. I might even say I'm going to leave a little bit earlier. You might make alternate plans. Don't stay the night. Realistic expectations. That's interesting. Work, That's smart. Do it your way. That's smart. Okay, mm -hmm. um, next we have an anonymous question mm -hmm. from a viewer who says, my mother turns every conversation around to be about her, even with my kids. How can I make it stop? Yeah, this is, again, remember what I was saying, like this, for narcissistic folks, this is what they do. They talk about themselves. They bring it back to themselves. She said, how, this person asked, how do I make it stop? You don't. Mm -hmm. So again, right away, go to this idea of that's not the game you're playing. You're not trying to make this stop, but you're accepting this is how it will be. So what that means is 
don't bring something you want, a problem you want to work through to your mom, because she's going to turn around and make it about herself. When you're going to see your mother, be ready for this. Maybe shorten the visits. If you have other yeah. family members like kids, prepare them for this so your kids don't think they're not important because oh. their grandmother keeps turning it back to themselves. So, I mean, everything's always about boundaries, and sometimes it's hard to figure out how yes, do you is. set it and how mm -hmm. do you say, or I like what you said, kind of pull yourself away is, yes. is a way to create a boundary. Yes, but is. are there other ways that you can you know, look, you're stuck in a, you're in a small area probably yeah. for three yeah. days. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, you're not going to set boundaries with them. So if this woman were to say, I, I will take this bet. If you were to say to mom, you talk about yourself too much. How much you, you willing to take that bet? Mom's yeah. going to lose it. Yeah. yeah. How dare you? How could you say this? I can't believe you say I, I raised you. I gave, yeah. I mean, you're going to get right. the, whole the whole kind list. of thing. Right. So that's up to you if you want to do that and have that conversation, yeah. which is going to get you nowhere. Yeah. So the, the boundaries option. don't become with them. They become with totally. yourself. Step Whether away. it is again, step away, yeah. disengage, listen to them, view your conversation with them. That's from like afar. a podcast yeah. about them. Yeah. From yeah. Afar. <laughs> yeah. That's smart. Podcast okay. about them. That's good. Um, okay, this is our another question from Carly. Let's see what she has to say. Recently, I cut a narcissist out of my life, and I was wondering if you had any tips about how to get through the initial cutoff. Okay. This is such a good question because, yeah. you know, not everyone can leave, but many people do. And when you do leave a narcissistic relationship, it's not all, ah, and everything's yeah. easy. Yeah. In hard. fact, a lot of people will say, this person's trying to pull me back in. Yep. We're back to that love bombing, charming, charismatic, yes. and it's hard yes. to resist. So that's called hoovering. That's number one. Number two, some people will feel naturally drawn back, regretting, wondering, did I make a mistake? All uh -huh. that justifying you did erasing in that relationship yes. is coming back. It's called euphoric recall. Yes. With all that erasing. Yes. Like, but I remember that really fun night we had in Miami. I'm totally. Like, honey, honey, yes. honey, no, 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 no. Let's yes. talk about all the other stuff that happened. I would say to her, yeah. please sit down and write down all the uh, disrespectful, terrible Remind things. Remind yourself. The reason why you so laugh. see it written down and you're you like, go. okay, uh -huh. this is why. Do it with a friend. Do it with a it's therapist. It's a good idea. It's, really right easy to, it's easy to forget yeah, it why is. you did something when someone's mm -hmm. charming. You're so good. Thank you. Oh, that Thank was so you good. Thank you so much. Thank I hope that's so helpful. Much. Yeah. Okay, for more on Dr. Ramani's book, it's not you. Head to today.com slash book. And we'll be back right after this. That was really Thank good. Thank you. That was fascinating. So you know what?